This is where we live. A galaxy of black holes, gas giants, nebula, mysteries, stunning landscapes, and much more. Space Engine, then, is the only space simulation to offer up such an immense variety of space phenomena. And that makes it the singular best piece of software to explore both the Milky Way as well as the many galaxies beyond our own. And if you want to take things a little further, Space Engine includes Steam Workshop, which allows for all a manner of interesting mods. Most recently, the section on spaceships caught my eye. Here, you can fly anything from the Federal Corvette from Elite Dangerous to the iconic USS Enterprise from Star Trek. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. More or less any ship you can think of, with a science fiction or real world, has a model available for it. Essentially, if you can find it, you can fly it. Now, of course, whilst you can certainly fly ships, Space Engine isn't a game. But gameplay isn't why I use Space Engine and very unlikely why anyone uses Space Engine. No, instead, Space Engine is about something far deeper. It's about discovery. After all, the universe is home to each and every one of us. So what better way to experience the parts of it we otherwise cannot see? This then can begin very close to home. Starting at Earth, exploring our very own solar system is a stunning prospect. The planets and moons on offer here are extremely well realized. In fact, they are so good that they can easily rival the real world NASA photography. Just look at that. So whether you want to check out the moons of Jupiter and Saturn or take a close look at the surface of Mars, all of these options are available. But Space Engine is about so much more than just the local star system. With around 100 billion galaxies available and literally trillions of planets, there's no shortage of new sites to see. And this is where the concept of exploration in Space Engine really begins to kick in. Broadly speaking, in my opinion, exploration can be broken down into two distinct categories. The first category is the idea of discovery, that is, seeking out strange new worlds that no one has ever seen before. This is entirely possible because Space Engine is built on procedural generation. Incidentally, it's also built upon real-world astrophysics, and that means everything you see in Space Engine is as accurately modelled as possible, and that includes full orbital mechanics in addition to the physical makeup of the object you're looking at. To return to the subject of discovery though, tracking down new and as yet unseen worlds as well as locations can be a real pleasure. In fact, there's entire sections of the internet devoted to doing exactly this, and then sharing the results. So this leads nicely onto the second side of exploration, which, to use a phrase, comes down to sightseeing. Now, this is a phrase that really should not be seen in a negative light. Sightseeing, after all, is a big part of life in the real world. Many people have a huge drive to want to see parts of the world, and that's very likely born from something deep within our collective consciousness. For me then, this is why exploration in Space Engine works so well. It fulfills both categories in the desire to explore. It nicely ticks the ability to discover something unique, whilst also ticking the ability to go and sightsee. Now, for those of you who are more into the scientific side of things, there's plenty of options here too. For starters, we've got all the planetary data up on the top left-hand side of the screen there, but above that, we've got a system layout. Just press F2 and this brings up a little indicator, a little map of all the planets and moons available in the system. Simply select one of those moons or planets, press the G key and go straight to it. Now, if you're not interested in all the cinematic flying around and the great panning effects, you can just simply drag the mouse around, right click on any world and scroll at the mouse around. You get a nice little spinning effect there, allowing you to basically look around any part of the planet. There's also a star system map. This is effectively an orrery view. From here, you get a very clear indication of the layout of the star system. Now, what better way to look at this than from our very own solar system? And here we can see the very familiar planets, but what you may notice is that they're not in the correct order. And this is because of the filters over the side. Basically, we can organize this list according to pretty much anything we actually want. Makes it very easy to get a quick visual overview of how you want to perceive the system. So you can choose by size, by mass, uh, by density, temperature, as well as a couple of other things there. And of course, you can select any of these worlds or moons, just press the G key and go straight to them. 
There's also a nice orbital mechanic map here. This will allow you to see all the orbits of any particular object in any chosen star system. From here, I'm just going to select a couple of um, asteroids here, or just one asteroid in fact, and then press the G key and that will take us straight to the chosen location. So basically, the map there is a great way to see all of the orbits of every single body in any chosen star system. If you're looking for something very specific, there's a very powerful search menu here. Go to the filters and you can set in here pretty much absolutely any parameters you can imagine. Space Engine will then very quickly build a list of all the uh, systems and planets that match your chosen filters. So then, that is why, in my opinion at least, exploration in Space Engine just works. And it works on many different levels. There's more information in the video description below if you'd like to find out more for yourself. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.